So at Neversink Farm, I don't till the soil. And I call it never think no-till only because it's my personal definition. There are a lot of definitions of no-till, um, you know, minimum till, you know, using a BCS with a power harrow, using a BCS and tiller, but only a tilling a little bit. Then there's like not disturbing it at all. And, you know, for me, all of them are fine. I, to me, it doesn't matter, but I have my personal definition that I use here that's about um, what I believe is no-till and what I believe is also incredibly highly productive for what I want to do, which is farming. Now there's, there's no-till where you're, you're in a backyard garden and you're just gardening for yourself. Then you don't even need to worry about tilting or the hours you're going to put into putting compost down, where you're putting layers of compost um, or organic matter, and though that's perfectly legitimate. It's just for me, that's not going to work when it comes to making money. Um, it is a farm, you know, we're over an acre, you know, 1.3 about this year, and so I need something that's going to be really efficient. Um, a really efficient system that doesn't take a lot of labor uh, but also leaves me a bed in which I can seed into uh, that's clean, uh, weed free and so the definition for me is just not inverting soil layers which I don't believe a broad fork does which we do broad fork to bring in air um, or what naturally occurs in the soil right that what I'm putting on the top of the soil, which is going to be a whole different amount of amendments, which is plant material, either the residue of crops or dried plant material that I have, and that's going to break down in the soil and work its way through the layers of the soil. By not tilling, I'm not inverting the soil or adding or causing that to break down too quickly. So when I add amendments, it's to the top of the soil. It's just going to be tilted in a little bit to keep it moist so that it begins to break down immediately and I get a nice smooth surface. Soil needs air. You know, it's soil is, is you know, 25 to 35 percent air. And as it gets compacted, that activity in the soil, you know, slows down. And so the broad fork is just there to give a little bit of air to the soil. Now, if you have soil that's very rocky or um, isn't balanced in its physics correctly, and the balance of sand and clay and uh, loam, uh, then it's going to be very hard to broad for. But I've changed the balance of my soil. I've taken the rocks out. I've changed that physical balance of, of sand and clay over time to make a soil that is incredibly soft um, and easy to broad for. And when the balance is right, and I'm not tilling, and I'm also balancing the, the chemical nature of the soil, I'm balancing the minerals in the soil, then I create the perfect environment for the biology. Because it's a living soil, and that, that's the important part of that living soil is that in an organic system it's the life in the soil that's breaking down the organic material into the food that's feeding the plants rather than me feeding the plants with let's say fish meal, um, blood meal, something that's going to instantly turn into nitrogen or in a, um, a non-organic system where you're using petrochemicals to add the nitrogen in a living soil that is breaking, it's breaking down the organic matter um, and creating everything that the plant needs as long as it's balanced in its physics and balanced in its chemistry. Um, and that I think, you know, we should go into, you know, another video talk about um, what all of those things mean, but overarching um, I've changed my soil over time 
so that it is well balanced, easy to broad fork, soft, and I never have to till and I never do till. But I do need a smooth bed. So I need, a, I need to tilt it just a little bit, just on the surface, work in some amendments, get it smooth so that I can use a cedar on it. And what we end up with is, you know, after years, this, this soil that's really perfect, uh, consistency, healthy. Uh, it's full of uh, crop residue from all the crops that we've had. Um, I'm not tilling it in. It just slowly works its way through the soil. And at night, and I come out here in the middle of the evening uh, with a headlamp on, you know, the worms are coming up through and grabbing organic material and bringing it down to break it down just under the surface. So dead leaves or roots and they're just breaking it down. And I don't want to interfere with that. Um, and it's also not only that I don't want to interfere, but it's about being efficient. For me, it's very inefficient to bring in a tractor it's, or, or a BCS. Um, and it's, it's one of the main reasons, you know, there are a lot of reasons, but one of the main reasons that we've managed to be so successful here is by removing unnecessary steps. So if we have a step in our bed prep, it's something we found incredibly necessary and important and increases efficiency. Because if it didn't, I would certainly remove it. 